HP unveiling its new Reverb headset for Enterprise VR. Larry Dignan got a chance to demo their product. Larry, let's uh, talk first impressions here. And you know, we're seeing a more business focused approach to VR. So talk about how this is catching on in the enterprise realm. Yeah, it, it's kind of interesting. When virtual reality first launched, uh, the idea was that this was going to be some big consumer play for gaming and um, entertainment and all this other stuff. Um, and, it, and it has been okay for gaming, but, but the biggest use case right now is enterprise. Um, and that's because corporations can use it for um, training, uh, product design. They could use it for uh, healthcare. Um, and also entertainment companies can use it too. And it's interesting because the biggest issue with VR overall is content. Um, if you're targeting consumers, you need, they need their killer content. They need their killer app. They need something to make you go, oh, I want to wear this, you know, still clunky headset. Um, in the enterprise, it's about training people in warehouses, um, I did a demo and, and you know, got to be in an operating room. So you're picking up different um, scalpels and whatnot and hand them to the doctor. Uh, so that was interesting training. Uh, part of the VR demo I got was also in a warehouse for safety where you're identifying risk and stuff like that. Um, and content for that is pretty not simple, but once you develop it, you can reuse it over and over, right? And since it's required training, an employee gets the training, gets something more, um, I guess, more engaging for them, and it kind of works out um, because you don't have to chase this big release content wheel type of thing that you do in the consumer space. Um, so there, there's real returns there. And expand, Larry, for us if you could, you know, on, on the use cases specifically where the technology will be best applied and even some cost savings potentially. Yeah, HP, uh, they, they highlighted some of the um, use cases for architecture where you can try out furniture, you can try out room designs, you can try out um, building schematics, uh, all that kind of stuff before you actually do it. And, and that demo was interesting in that you know, you did get to kind of hop around and see things. Uh, healthcare, another good use case. Um, the biggest return on a lot of these things, especially for things like training, is um, you don't have to fly people in, right? So, so that's huge. Um, and, and almost all, all the return on investments for VR really revolves around travel. Uh, you don't have to fly people in to do things to train. And, and that's, a, that's a big win. Um, if you just had to fly out three instructors to teach something, um, you know, that's going to cost you more than the headset. So, so that's sort of, you know, and for HP, it's about um, connecting the, the headset to the workstations and things like that. So HP already has a lot of enterprise VR ready devices in the field. So the headset, which, you know, it, it's better than the first one. Um, the design's a little heavier than the um, HoloLens 2, which is more augmented reality. And they're really competing with HTC Vive, which is the, um, or Vive, I think is how they say it. Uh, but they're really competing with HTC because they're the big enterprise player too for virtual reality. So you kind of see the big PC makers and HTC and, and sort of this dogfight for, enterprise, for enterprises. Um, and, and the HP one is also riding on Microsoft's mixed reality platform. So that also probably helps them with enterprise use cases since there's a lot of Microsoft shops out there. And, you know, as far, uh, Larry, as the design is concerned and the look of it and the comfort level, does it all kind of fall in line with uh, what HP's put out before or is this a little bit different? Uh, they're using LCD screens. It is definitely more comfortable than previous ones I've tried. Um, the downside is you're, you are tethered to a PC, so it's not, it's not hands-free and, you know, HP said the biggest reason for that is basically, uh, you get more power, you get more resolution and things like that, which for a training setting, it probably makes sense. You don't mind being tethered per se. Um, and you know, it, it was comfortable overall. Uh, there are consumer, there are, they are going to do a consumer version. Um, but they said demand on the enterprise and consumer was about the same, the first generation. 
Um, but the difference was for the consumer one, they were doing a lot of promotion um, where the enterprise one, it was just organic. Like enterprises were coming to them and saying, hey, can we try this out? So there are a lot of VR in production and uh, pilots to production sort of cases in uh, the enterprise. And it, it's kind of interesting to watch. And it's actually turned out probably the opposite of what we thought it would be initially. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, uh, Larry, how this fares uh, for the enterprise. And for more, of course, on the new HP headset uh, in Larry's article, be sure to check out ZDNet.